My favourite VR game of all time is Beat Saber. There's something so fun about the simplicity in having lightsabers to hit blocks to the beat with music playing in the background, it's just the best. And I saw this Reddit post where someone had made a Beat Saber level in Unreal Engine. I thought it looked relatively simple, so I set myself the task of trying to recreate it in one hour. <laughs> Safe to say, it was a lot harder than I thought. I'm thinking of making this a series where I recreate different VR games in Unreal Engine in one hour, so if you have any suggestions for that, pop them in the comments if you want to see me try and have a crack at it. Anyway, let's see how I got on. After starting the timer, I set up a new VR project and created a new basic level. With that done, I can now start working on the basic level with the floor platform in and walls on both sides of the player. I bring the player blueprint into the scene and this is where I can start modeling the sabers. Originally I was just going to find some Beat Saber models on like Sketchfab and use them in my game but I thought that felt like cheating so I thought I'd just do it myself. I made the handle separate to the rest of the saber so that I can have a different material on it and have it be used as a thing that the player grabs onto. Then I duplicated this and extended it to make the rest of the saber. I could have just left it like this but obviously I made it out of a cylinder so the ends are flat. Which works fine for the handle but the lightsabers are rounded so I brought in a sphere to be the end of it. Hold on. An eBay bid is ending soon. Hold on. Alright, 10 seconds left. I'm placing my bid. I'm not even kidding by the way, I'm actually doing this. I'm the highest bidder. Five, four, four three, two, four! Uh, where was I? So I brought in a sphere to be the end of it. Can you shut up? I know I lost it. This is a really bad way of doing it and normally you'd use Blender so it actually connects properly but that would have taken too long. Now I can convert these pieces separately into static meshes which I can import into a blueprint and position them together ready for the code. Now that the meshes are in the blueprint I'm going to create a plane which is literally just a flat shape and line it up on the saber part so that I can use it for slicing later on. I also create a grab component under the handle of the saber so that the player can actually hold it and change it to snap instead of free so that the saber is locked at the right spot instead of just being at the angle that it's picked up at. Now I'm going to make the material for the saber like the glowing blue and the red default colors in beat saber i make a simple blue color connect that to the base color then i tried making it glow by multiplying it at the emissive color and also the sabers in the game aren't like solid colors they are slightly translucent so i added that which took way too long but now i can duplicate this for the red one too i also made a simple black material for the handle i can add these to my static meshes and get started on writing the code which i'll be honest i was using a youtube tutorial as a reference for it was a really helpful video from Safanzi who talked you through how to make a slicing sword in unreal engine using the plane i could created earlier I made two events a begin and an end overlap to detect what passes through the plane. Now I'm going to create my block blueprint and add a simple cube with the blue material for my note. I create a procedural mesh under this cube which will allow the cube to be sliced into different pieces. Coming back into the saber blueprint I can slice this procedural mesh by first casting to it. Now I can get the plane in my saber and find the location of it in the world and its up vector which I can't lie, I don't really know what that is. It's just used in the tutorial, so I thought I'd use it. And we are using it. We also want to toggle on create other half, set create new section for cap. And for now, we can set the cap material to be the glowy red. And then we can make sure that the other half of the sliced mesh simulates to fall to the ground. Now here, what I tried to do was add some lights in the scene to make things actually visible. And I added these tubes in the back, which added something. For some reason, they didn't end up working even when I maxed out the lumen and everything, but the tubes look cool at least. I imported my saber into the scene to play test in VR and make sure that I can pick it up. And this is the point where things started going incredibly wrong. For some reason it wasn't letting me pick up the saber for a start which I couldn't figure out and I just tried it over and over again to make sure it wasn't a fluke. At first I thought it was something to do with the blueprint or the grab component I put in so I found the original grabbable cube from the VR template and replaced it with my saber mesh to see if that worked. So I put it into the scene to test and it still wasn't letting me grab it. Then I had an epiphany and realized that the player pawn that I put in at the start I hadn't actually set it to control the player when you start the game. So I tried it again and it still didn't work. I looked at it for ages trying to figure it out and then... Oh my god. This is the reason, isn't it? There's no fucking collision. I completely forgot that when you turn an object into a static mesh, it removes its collision, which made my hand have nothing to grab onto. After adding the collision, I tested it again. It's upside down, but that's fine because it works. The way I went about fixing this was stupid. I just randomly rotated the grip component and hoped it worked eventually. In the end, I realized I could just rotate the saber and then reset the grip component back to the default rotation and it worked. Why? Just kidding. I went back to randomly rotating it and eventually it worked. Yes, finally. I realized I was an idiot for doing all this in complete darkness, so I added a simple point light above the standing platform so that I could actually see. I still don't know why this light works and not the others I added, so if you know that, then please let me know. With the light now on, I could finally see the plane that was in my saber, and I saw that it was facing the wrong way. So I rotated that the right way and brought my block blueprint into the scene. I checked to see if my saber could slice it, and it was gone. I decided to spend the last 20 minutes I had going through the tutorial again to copy anything I'd missed, which I had. I needed to make sure that the procedural mesh was set to the mesh of the cube in the blueprint, and then I tested it. 
So it kind of worked, it definitely sliced the block, but it wasn't letting me do it again, and it wasn't simulating. At this point, I was getting nervous with the time I had left, so I put the video on 1.5 times speed. Use complex and simple collisions, disable that. Def you definitely don't want to do that, compile it. Turns out I absolutely needed to do that, and for the next like five minutes, nothing was working because of it. I ended up watching through the video like five times to make sure I'd done everything because it still wasn't working. Eventually, I listened to the guy and disabled that setting, and now it was properly simulating. Unfortunately, because of something else, the cube was just going straight through the floor. For some stupid reason, my mind immediately thought, oh, it's the floor that's missing collision then, and I spent ages changing the floor to get it to work, and it never did. I... By trying to fix this, I somehow created new issues, like my teleporter wasn't finding the floor. I somehow removed the ability to slice the block at all now. I was honestly starting to think it was Unreal Engine that was broken. I tried remaking the whole block blueprint in case I'd changed a setting by accident and broken it. Right. THROUGH THE GROUND! Why? WHO KNOWS?! It was clear at this point that with one minute left I wasn't gonna do it in time, but I still wanted to know why. Maybe let's change it to- Oh, the timer's going off? Who gives a shit? The first half an hour was going so well. The last half an hour was me trying to figure out why this fucking block is merging through the ground. Ooh. The solution, by the way, was so obvious and I can't believe that I didn't get it immediately. You probably already figured it out too. It's because the default cube I was using had no collision, so I changed it to a static mesh that did. Oh, I think I figured that out. If this works now, you might actually just see me kill myself. For a whole half an hour, I've been using a cube that doesn't have collision. If this works now, it counts. There it goes! I tried just removing gravity from the cube to see what happens. Gravity? Who needs that? Well, I could interact with it now. Somehow the slicing still wasn't working, so I watched through the video for the seventh time and thought something was wrong with- <laughs> Somehow the slicing still wasn't working, so I watched through the video for the seventh time and thought something was wrong with the plane. I That's what I've done! I, don't think I have done all of this. I could have sworn I did that. I put a collision on the plane instead of setting it to overlap so nothing was passing through it. Now here we are 15 minutes after the time ended. Oh. Yes! Why couldn't I have done that? I could have done that 40 minutes ago. I wanted to keep working on it just to see how much better I could make it with more time. Here are the things that I wanted. I wanted you only to be able to slice it once. I wanted it to be still in the air and then when you slice it, it simulates and falls to the ground and then disappears after a certain amount of time. I wanted it to make a slicing sound when you actually slice it. And I wanted both a blue and a red saber to slice both blue and red blocks. So I started with making them disappear after two seconds and I did that by casting to the block as the owner of the procedural mesh. Then all I had to do was add a delay of the time I wanted and then a destroy actor node after. After that I recorded some slicing sounds and cap cut to import to my game. Slice! 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 Let's use all of these. I exported each one separately so that I could play them at random. I can do this by creating a sound cube which would randomly choose between the three sounds. Now all I have to do is play the sound after it gets sliced. Slice. I duplicated the block a few times in my scene so that I could slice them over and over again. Slice, 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 slice. Is it playing? Slice, slice. Ow. I can't tell it. It's playing through the headphones. Slice, slice. 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 <laughs> slice. <laughs> That I love that so much. I then made sure that the block would simulate after it sliced. To make it so that the blocks could only be sliced once, I created a variable in the blueprint just called slice, which I can toggle true after. Then I just need a branch to make sure that the block hasn't been sliced before it does anything. Oh yeah, and I put in a few more cubes. All right, we've created the circle of slice. Slice. <laughs> slice. <laughs> nice. Oh. Slice. <laughs> slice. <laughs> Why does it disappear? Oh, I'm so dumb. I forgot to set the thing that destroys the actor to the block, so it was just destroying the saber by default. And then I remembered about the red saber. Wait, what? I haven't even created the right saber. I literally just duplicated the blue saber and made it red. Let's grab our left saber and let's slice. <laughs> slice. <laughs> and then I recorded some miss sounds. Miss. 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 Idiot. Stupid. Loser. No. Wrong. Incorrect. 
right, there's a lot there. I went through exporting and importing them into my game again and did the same thing, creating a sound cue to randomize between them all. Now I just had to check after the block is sliced which color it was. And if it was blue for the blue saber, it plays a slice sound. And if it's red for the blue saber, then it plays a miss and vice versa. Let's try using a blue saber with a red block. Idiot. <laughs> slice. So that one says slice, but this one. Miss. Miss. Slice. Slice. Miss. Miss. Slice. Wrong. <laughs> That is so good. I fucking love this. I could make this an actual game. I also found a different cube that was chamfered, meaning it had rounded corners. Chamfer cube. That works so much better. Oh my god, yes. This is so much better. Slice. Now, now the cubes are rounded. Miss. Yeah. No. No. Miss. Miss. Slice. Slice. Yes, I made Beat Saber. It only took an extra two hours. Yay! Yeah. Well, I ended up spending double the time, but at least it works. And again, if you want to see me try and remake some other VR games, let me know in the comments, and because I think that could be a really fun series to do. But also, shout out to Wear Equip School for being a member, and if you want to be a member yourself, it starts at about £3 a month, and you get perks like shout outs and videos such as this one, and early access to new videos before they come out. Anyway, yeah, thank you guys for watching, and goodbye.